Hello, everybody. Miles Kessler here, and welcome to another one of our um, coaching sessions uh, for meditation. And uh, today, um, oh, let's see, Paul Crick. Paul Crick has, has agreed to, uh, to, to join us in this session. And um, first, Paul, I'll read a little bit of your background, and then if you could elaborate. Um, Paul's living in, in the, the UK. And um, he says that, uh, Paul says that he's been practicing meditation on his own for some time, but with no formal study uh, with a teacher. And he's, um, the main method, I guess, the, the experience that he's practicing with is following uh, by binaural beats, uh, tracks. And um, you can tell me a little bit more about that in just a moment, Paul. Um, he practices about 15 minutes uh, per session, about three times a week, and in terms of long uh, or any type of uh, retreat experience, he has none. So, um, and also, uh, Paul is a, he works in, uh, he's a consultant, he works with leadership, uh, coaching, leadership development. So that's kind of, I assume, Paul, that you're bringing also this kind of, this meta awareness into that, into that field as well. Yeah, and the idea is, uh, of, obviously, you develop greater presence with greater attention, therefore, the ability to control your attention um, yeah. helps you develop greater presence and um, right. i'm interested in, in exploring that and learning more about it so i thought this was a great way to do it perfect perfect uh you want to tell me a little bit more about your your your, your before we go into the nuts and bolts of what you're actually doing in the practice so you're using um so i'm using or audio yeah audio soundtracks that typically have binaural beats um, mm -hmm. buried within them um to take the brain wave down into a um mm -hmm. into a state where uh you're um able to able to meditate or into a meditative state um, okay. and then just listen to that for for 15 minutes to to set the day up and end the day um is the ideal so if i can start with 15 minutes in the morning i tend to find that my day goes better mm -hmm. and then if i if i start if i end the day with 15 minutes before lights out then uh, the sleep the quality of sleep seems to be better so on on the grounds that that's happening then it's a good practice but clearly okay. there's more to learn. Yeah, so just to, for those who might not know what binaural beats are, that it's, um, I, I've never used them myself, but I, well, actually I've, I've listened to a few, but I've never used it as a practice. Um, but as I understand it, it's, it's kind of a, a, um, a brain waves entrainment, mm -hmm. but there's certain, there's certain that we all have certain brain waves. In fact, the mm -hmm. meditative states, if you measure them uh, with, a, with a brain wave measurement device, an EEG, I guess, or, yeah, I think. I assume so, yeah. Yeah, uh, it'll show as you go into different states of meditation, you you move from alpha to beta to theta to yeah. you know, delta, I believe I don't know exactly what yeah, they are. Down to down, delta. Yeah. I believe. Right. Yeah. So they go into deeper and deeper states of consciousness. The brain waves have very very different um, activities, and those can be compared to in a way our waking, like mm -hmm. our normal kind of daily brain waves. And that's a waking state of consciousness. And it, there's something called the, the dreaming state of consciousness. When we're asleep, but the mind is processing dreams is another set of brain waves that, that shifts into. And then the deep sleep state of deep sleep, deep sleep state of consciousness is the deepest uh, that we have on our kind of daily rhythm cycle. And that has the, 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 the deepest brain waves. And I believe it's alpha, delta, theta. Is that, is that correct? Do you, do you I believe so. I, I did read up on it, but I know not not read about them for us. So I just I just use it and it seems to do the do right. the work. Yeah, yeah. So that's and and with the with the brain entrainment with the with the, the listening to the brain waves, it's it starts you at your kind of normal and then it will mm. over gradually over a few minutes it will lead you into deeper and deeper states through yeah. the beats. It, it the, your brain entrains with the beats that are coming up in the in the that's right. track. And then everything else goes with it. Your your heart right. rate slows and your breathing slows and Great. you're engaging. Uh, okay, so before all right, so before I ask you about that specifically, let me um, just get one question. You've kind of mentioned it to me before offline a little bit, but um, before we started the recording, but what do you hope to get from today's session? Uh, just an ability. So, so I'm studying Aikido. So um, uh, mm -hmm. the idea of being in the meditative state. So, so I get, I have had experiences of focusing on myself, but focusing on the other person as I'm training and just the ability to... Um, be patient, uh, respond at the, at the right moment as opposed to when I think I should <laughs> respond uh, and to concentrate on me and my movements and um, to do the still, learn to do the stillness in motion thing, um, which I'm a long way off. So I believe um, meditation is, is a part of the key of that. 
I think the other, the other side of it is, you know, from a leadership development, as we said just before we started, uh, the ability to meditate regulates your attention. And therefore, the more you can regulate your attention, the greater presence you have in a situation. And therefore, in a leadership um, context, that becomes really important. Um, the ability to maintain your attention and drive that energy in the direction it needs to go um, creates presence, uh, drives trust, and therefore having an experience of that will enable me to teach it. And drives trust. Okay, great. Paul, I'm going to say something about the about the this last part with the leadership at the end. Okay, and then right sure. now we'll and then and then I'll also say something. <laughs> about the Aikido because that, that, that actually the Aikido, the meditation, our, our meditative experience or our states training uh, in relationship with another person, be it in Aikido kind of conflict resolution type of thing, or in your, your consulting leadership work um, is an expression of the Aikido, but uh, sorry, of the meditation. But right now I just want to stay for a moment just with your, your solo practice. Okay. Sure. All right. So, so tell me what happens um, when you sit down, typically you put in your, your earbuds and you, you start the entrainment. Can you describe to me the process that you go through? Uh, literally just um, turning all distractions off um, and sitting a chair, feet on the floor, um, arms at rest in a relaxed position, uh, and then turn the tape on and then, and then just um, allow the tape to do its thing, I guess, and, and my breathing slows, and I'm aware of that. Okay, so let's back up for just a second. What would you say is the, the every day is different, of course, but what would you say the mental state is like um, at, before you turn the tape on? Uh, that's a good question, because it varies, and it depends on the quality of sleep I've had, if it's a morning session, and obviously the quality of the day. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes you, sometimes I wake up and I'm frazzled because I've not had the quality of sleep. So, you know, you, you know, that thing where you've slept, but you haven't slept, um, that kind of feeling, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm using it, I'm using it as relief for that. Uh, how was, it, how was it today? How was it today? For example, it was good. Uh, I'm lucky I'm back from a week's vacation in the countryside. So I'm feeling, uh, and we're, we're winding down into the festive season. Uh, so course, family time. Right. So, yeah, so, so I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling, um, Chilled. I'm feeling ready to do that. Uh, okay. There's so a lot before, did, did you do the meditation today? Sorry, I didn't. I didn't no, not that. yet. No. All right, good. But it, assuming you would, the, the the state today is that it, you had a, a restful weekend, so the mind is a little bit sure. more rested, a little bit more repaired. It's also the holiday season, so you're. It's not such a exactly. frazzled time or busy time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it could be anywhere in between being completely, you know, uh, frazzled from let's say processing stuff at night in mm -hmm. your sleep waking up tired not rested to being rested as you are now in a more yes. calm state okay good so you sit down you turn on the you turn on the um it's not is it music? It, 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 yeah it's it's um yeah it's a music track that i use um okay and uh, that lasts for 15 minutes because i i find that i find that it's finding making the time is important and it's it's a busy life so uh, 15 minutes works. I can achieve that. Whereas if I say, oh, I'm going to sit down and do 45 minutes, I'll fail Fair at enough. that. I'd rather, I'd, I'd rather set up 15 totally. minutes and do that and find even, even two minutes, even two minutes, yeah. even just, you know, stop pausing after your coffee is mm -hmm. actually a good thing. So, so what I want to know though, you sit down and it's somewhere between frazzled to being calm. Mm -hmm. That's the spectrum. It's somewhere in there. You, you, you turn on the music and yeah. what do you experience? Uh, so, uh, I settle, feel, feel grounded and centered because feet are on the floor, uh, feel the weight sink into the, the chair, my back against the chair, and then just, just literally um, following the track and listen to my breathing slow. Um, okay, so let me just, let me just, let me sure. just, uh, just to pause you for a second. So mm -hmm. you begin by, in a way with a, it sounds to me like you're, you're doing a, uh, either consciously or unconsciously or intentionally or unintentionally, but you're doing a bit of a grounding practice. You feel the feet on yeah. the ground, you feel the body in the chair, you kind of, you, you settle into the body, you anchor your mm -hmm. attention into the body in the present mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Yes. And then you, sh and, and during that, I suppose you're, you're focusing mostly on the sensations, the feet on the ground, the back on the chair, the, the maybe the buttock and the seat. And mm -hmm. then you shift to listening to the, yeah. the brain waves. Yes. Okay. All right. So then you now carry on. 
Uh, and then I'm aware of um, sometimes the breathing slowing. Sometimes I'm just uh, in a state of, uh, I'd call it a suspended state almost. Um, and then I will get uh, a tingling forehead, um, uh, which is quite a pleasurable sensation. But um, so I focus on that, on that and let that flow, ebb and flow as it happens. And then just let the 15 minutes run um, and the music fades out at the end. And then I sort of come around, uh, shake myself out a little bit um, okay. to because it's quite a relaxed state. And then I'm ready, ready. And then you know, sometimes I'll do a check in and go, well, how was that? Do I feel different um, before actually moving on uh, into whatever the day has planned? Okay, great. Yeah, okay. All right, so you said a lot of stuff there. I'm gonna, I wanna go back and, and really kind of sure. double click on the things you said and see what's actually happening there. Because in a way, um, I imagine you skip a stone across a, a river or a lake, uh, you know, a stuff. so you'll see four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 if you get a good skip, 10 points mm -hmm. where it touches. And those 10 points are really clear, but between each point, there's actually a lot of water that the stone is, is covering, a lot of water that the stone is covering. So I want to kind of, what you touched on, I want to get into the in the, into the in-between. Um, first thing I want to say is that the, the, um, the, the biurnal beats, binaural beats, excuse me, the binaural beats in the in brain entrainment, has different names, um, is an external um, a cause for moving into states of consciousness. Eventually, and it's a good one, Many people use them and it, and it clearly works. I think you probably can have testified to the fact that it, it's effective. Um, um, and, and yet those deeper states are, are caused by an external uh, sound. What you want to do at the, eventually is you want to get to the point where you can do that by yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're creating the internal path and it's clearly working. The way you described it is very clear. It's clearly working. Um, at some point, it's almost like you want to, you want to wean yourself, slowly wean yourself from the, from that and not all the time, but sometimes do that same process without the, without the, uh, the music mm -hmm. and see if you can follow that same inward path. So right at the beginning, it's really clear because um, you, know, you do a little bit of a grounding uh, practice. There's probably a little bit of uh, mental activity in the morning, you know, thoughts or desires or the mind starts planning for the day or whatever. But the, the, the uh, binaural beats kind of ground you, you do your grounding practice and then you notice the breathing slowing. So you went from the, the check-in where you anchored your awareness in the body, you shifted to listen to the, the, the binaural beats, and then you notice that the, the breath is slowing or do you consciously shift your attention to the breath? No, I notice, if I'm honest. Okay, do you ever take then, the breath? Yeah. So, and, and, so and then just, and then just uh, it's, it's like going on the ride for me. It's, it's, it's kind of like, okay, the, the ride, yes. The rider Good. started, so, and then I just let that happen rather than force it or count it or pay attention. Oh. Okay, so the ride has started, and then you then you let that happen. When mm -hmm. you say the ride has started, you notice that the breath shifts into a slower. Yeah, pace. yeah. You, then you know that you've kind of slipped. You slipped into a deeper state. Starting to yes. Yeah, and that that's something that you just notice. It's not like you're looking. Yeah. You, you intention. Okay, and when you say you, you the ride has started, then at that point, are you intentionally shifting your attention to the breath? No, I'm, I'm just literally letting happen what happens, if that makes sense. Totally. It totally does. Because you went from the breathing is slowing to a sus suspended state. And I'm trying to figure out what happens in between there. So mm -hmm. um, the breathing slows down. You notice it. Do you stay mm -hmm. with the breath and the in-breath and the out-breath for any period of time? Uh, I think, if anything, I perhaps settle a bit more into the body. And I just go, it, it's almost like... Um, ah, this feeling's familiar. Uh, I've, I'm in the right place. Therefore, let let this continue, if that makes sense. But it's it's probably not mm -hmm. quite as conscious. And as a that sounds like a tick list. It's kind of like, okay, is the breathing? Yeah, tick. It, it, are you settled into your body more? Yeah, tick. Okay, let's go. It, it's not quite that. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not what I'm asking. What, yeah, that's not what I'm asking. What I'm trying to figure out okay. is is are you letting your mind when I say your mind, I mean that you're, you have your you have the, the the mind that's mindful, that's aware, mm -hmm. and then you have the the objects that it's aware of. Yes, it could be the breath, it could be the body, it could be the sounds, it could be whatever. 
And um, at some point those might actually come together and there's this kind of suspended state that you're speaking about. But at, at another point it's like, okay, here's the breath. I'm going to follow the breath, not as a tick, mm -hmm actually ticking off the list, but just as kind of staying with it. And then you notice something in your body and you say you become aware of the body. So uh, what I want to know is when you, when you shift into the breath and you notice the breath is slowing and you feel like you've kind of, okay, now I'm arriving into that state. At that point, are you just kind of letting go into choiceless awareness? Yes. Or are you focusing the mind in any, any place specific? No, I'm not focusing the mind in any way because what, ha what happens sometimes is um, thoughts will come into I'll get interrupted and some thought will co will arise uh, and then um, and then I need to need to find recognize that it's arisen uh, yeah. and then and so then it arises and you're next, identified with the thought you're in yeah, the thought yeah I'm in the thought and then I go oh I'm in the thought I need to I, yeah. that's fine isn't that great uh, let go of the thought okay good. Then, so tell me about then, that uh, I want to know a little bit more about that process so you need there's <laughs> It's normal. Yeah, it happens. It's, oh, yeah, yeah. You're caught in thinking. You, you, you recognize, okay, hang on, I'm thinking. And then you're like, you say, then you, in a way, detach. You say, okay, that's a thought. Isn't that great? Yeah. In other words, you don't, when you say, isn't that great? What I'm hearing is that you don't. Yeah, it's like watching. You don't, it, you don't try it, to push it away or anything like that. Instead of driving the car, I'm on the side of the road watching the traffic. And sometimes I'll right. get caught, on, caught, on a, caught in a car again. And oh, I yeah, kind of go, right. okay, yeah. I'm in a yeah. car. I need, I need to be watching. I need to step aside and watch the thought. And, sometimes, right. and then you notice that that's a thought and that's just great. It, it comes yeah. like any other thought. It goes away like any other thought. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes it takes longer to recognize them in the thoughts, uh, to catch yourself, to be able to pull yourself back. And you kind of go, because you've been on a ride and, mm -hmm. and you kind of go, oh, that, that was a thought. I, I, sometimes it can be judgmental. You go, oh, I, I should have let go of that. Um, or it can be, oh, that's fascinating. It's a thought. Um, right. I'm able to actually return to this state right, I so was let, in. So, so then let me ask you, so that, that described it really nicely. And that's actually what, that, that's, that's a beautiful description of what we want to, how we want to meditate with, uh, with, with mental formations or, or thoughts, especially when we get caught up in a thought. Sometimes, as you mentioned that you, you, you get out, you, you get caught up in the thought, and, okay, you, you're able to kind of step aside and let it go away. Other times you, you, you can be a little bit of a judgment. Now, from what I heard you is that you're mindful of the judgment. Mm -hmm. Yes, can be. Yeah. And when you're mindful of the judgment, what are you mindful of? What are the qualities of, for example, what are the qualities of judgment? Um, it's uh, not doing it. Uh, occasionally, it's not doing it right. It's kind of like, ah, damn, didn't. There you yeah. go again. Same, same right. mistake. Okay. Uh, and and that, then, that, so it's a, a little bit frustrated. A little bit frustrated. A um, little bit of frustration. Now, would you say that's yeah. more of a mental experience or is it a physical experience? Um, that's a great question. Um, a little bit of both, I think, if I, if I yeah. think about it. Yeah, yeah. So, so when the judgment arises, does it arise in the mind or in the body? Uh, good, good question. Um, I, d I honestly don't know the answer to that. I, c I could try and be clever and guess it, but, but I, I okay. don't know. I would have to so know. Let me ask that. a little bit closer. So do you also experience uh, the, the judgment slash frustration? Do you also experience it on the physical level? Uh, sometimes, yes. Depends how frazzled I am going into the session. So right. if I don't have and, a lot, yeah. have what, a lot of what, tolerance, um, that, that emotional sure. bandwidth of tolerance, yeah, it's kind of like, Great. So, and what are, what would be some examples of how you would experience the judgment or frustration on a physical level that you would notice in the meditation? You know, you were able to get out of the car, step step to the side, and you notice, oh, my shoulder's tired or something like that. Mm, yeah, I, I I think it's um. I think the quality of the breathing is is off track, and uh, I think maybe not quite as grounded as I was in the body. So not as relaxed and, and settled. Uh, yeah, those two things are probably what comes Perfect. to mind. So in a way, it's the antithesis of what, as how you start your process. Exactly. You sit down, you turn on the thing, or you check into the body first, then you, you connect with the, the brain waves. Yep. And then you notice the slowing down of the breath. And then, you know, some time can go by, one day, another day, sometimes yes, sometimes no, but you catch yourself in a thought, or maybe it's a judgment, a little bit of frustration. And if you check in with that on a mental level and or on a physical level, the breath has changed. It's no longer deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a little um, maybe tension in the, in the, in the body, in the breath. Uh, there's mm -hmm. probably also, you'll probably also notice tension in the mind. Yeah. yeah. 
So what our job is as, as meditators, this whole idea of you like stepping out of the car and standing on the side of the road is the practice of mindfulness or the practice of awareness training, whether it's in that we really, really develop our deepest ability to, to do that in meditation. But then of course we're training that in Aikido as well. And I'm sure that in your leadership development that you're also tra- developing the capacity just to step back, to, to detach a little bit, not to deny or, or disengage or, or, or uh, dissociate, but to that detach and, and observe. Yes. That, that, that's a, it's an important ability in the meditation. And then what you observe, for example, with the frustration or the, the meditation, sorry, the judgment is the breath has changed. It's probably become a little bit tighter, a little bit more shallow, <coughs> less deep. There's some tension in the body. Okay. Now, if we just stay at, for, as an example, if we just stay with this, this judgment or frustration, and as, as you continue to observe it, you've stepped out of the car, you're on the side of the road, you're observing that, what happens to it? Usually it can dissolve because I, there comes a point where I know what I'm doing. Great. It's now, kind of, it's you, kind of, it, I, I'm in that judgment space. Awesome, for what purpose, awesome. for what, what purpose are you judging? Well, right. you no. Know. Yeah. And you see it dissolve? No, I experience it in the body. So it's, it's a, yeah, let's think about this as a strategy. The strategy in the, is, is probably a bodily one. Once I've recognized that it's almost like an internal voice goes, you're judging. Okay, I'm judging, let go. And then the speed at which I let go is either very, very quick, because sure. I'm on a good day, I've had good quality, good quality either prior to, in, in some way, shape or form, prior to the session. Mm-hmm. Or if it's a more stressful thing, um, I need to say to myself, either get on the mat because <laughs> it'll feel better or, uh, or, or, or just cut yourself some slack. It's okay. That's you know, no, nobody is a, nobody is a perfect meditator. Yeah. Great. That's great. That's the, all that. That's great. Now I'm asking something a little bit more subtle. Okay. Um, you said you kind of, you, you, you tell yourself to let it go. There's a moment mm-hmm. where you're entangled in one to one degree or another in the judgment or frustration. Mm-hmm. And then the letting go is, is when you're, you're no longer entangled with it. Is that fair to say? That's fair. Okay. Now, is that something you do as a strategy or is that something that happens? Um, it depends is the honest answer. Good. Yeah. Is it both? Could it be both? Yes, it can. So if I'm, if I'm aware to it, if I'm aware of what I'm doing and it's just a, re, it's a recognition of a pattern then you just go, Oh, it's a pattern. Uh, let go. And you let it go or it lets yeah. go. I let go. So is there agency or does it just happen? There's agency. Okay, good. So, so that's all fine. Now what, what you want to get to the point where is even there's no agency. Okay. Because the judgment comes from nowhere. Do, do you have judgment now? Maybe you do, I don't know. But you, let's say it's more or less not there now. So it comes from nowhere. It's caused by something, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I, my mind wandered off and I'm, I've only got 15 minutes to meditate and now I've just wasted five minutes. Yes, some conditions. So it, comes from, yeah. it comes from somewhere, but it, but it was nowhere. Now it's here and it's going to go back to nowhere. So the way that it came from nowhere, we want to be able to kind of observe that process that it comes from nowhere, it stays for a while. And it goes away. And even though we're talking about judgment, I'm not picking on judgment. It could be anything, really, anything, planning the day or whatever. So can you, I just clarify that? Do, sure. do, you mean, do you mean by that that when the judgment comes in, it's literally allowing yourself to sit with it until it dis- disappears? Uh, you can choose. Now, if, it's a, okay. if, it's a, if it gets to be a bit obsessive, Mm-hmm. Like some thoughts, they come and they go and whatever. So it's okay to just, like you said, let it go by. Um, oh, that's, that's nice. That's a thought, whatever. So kind of not have any type of relationship with it. See it come and see it go. And that's fine. Other times you see the thought and you, you might decide, okay, I'm just going to go back to my breath. So you intentionally just go, you're just, okay, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go back in my breath. And you reground your attention in the breath. And that's all fine. Obsessive thoughts and judgment tends to kind of be a bit on the obsessive side or, or heavy side. But it, it, thoughts that come back, you, you, you're going to want to take your time and forget about the rest of the practice and make that your practice. Because okay. you, you could observe the breath and go deep in meditation. You could listen to the beats and go deep into meditation. Or you could observe the judgments and go deep into meditation. The object doesn't matter. The okay. ju- for example, a mental formation, for example, like judgment, 
is a more subtle object. And it's a common one that meditators have. So what, what interested me is that you said it eventually it dissolves. Now for me, dissolving, like imagine you take a, 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 a cube of sugar mm -hmm. and you put it in a, in, a, in a cup of tea and it's a clear glass and you can watch the whole process of, until you can actually see when the, when the sugar's gone. Sure. You can see it all dissolve. Or the sun setting, you can see until the sun, if you're just there with it. Or you can put it in the, in the cup of tea, go over here and look back. Oh, yeah, it's gone. Mm -hmm. But you didn't see the process of it going. No. So what you want to do to get into the flow of experience, you want to get to the point where you can see the process of the dissolution. Okay. And, and at That's the really beginning, nice it won't nice. be there. But as you, like the, the point where you say it gets into a suspended state, which is what I want to ask you about next, at that point, you should be able to see them. When, when, it's, when you're still kind of grounding and just following the breath and starting to drop in, you won't be able to see that. But at the point where it gets into the suspended state, thoughts can still, can and will come up from time to time. If you can just kind of take that as your meditation object, impersonally, you know, and just see it's going to, it'll, it'll either become more intense or it'll become less intense. It'll stay the same. Eventually, it'll all disappear. And if you can stay with it to the point until it disappears, that would be, uh, you'll, you'll be dropped practice. Okay? I've got that. That's really, I, really that's a you lovely distinction. It. Yeah. Great. Now, can you tell me about this suspended state a little bit? Um, I'd liken it to floating in a just in a pool in a swimming pool yeah you, you're just yeah. you're supported somehow but you're you're not really present to the immediate what's going on you're just supported and enjoying the experience it's almost like being in a flotation tank have you ever done one of those it's uh it it's um no, but I've had experienced something like that in meditation. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it's, you're not asleep, but you're very, you're in a very peaceful state. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're supported from underneath somehow. That's the, I can't articulate it any better at the moment. It's very clear. That's very, uh, do you, do you, uh, what's your sense of boundaries like in that state? Um, well, I feel very safe in that state. state. Um, okay. Do you feel your legs? Um, and so when I say boundaries, like the body boundaries, are body boundaries, more present? Okay. present? Uh, feet on floor, maybe. Uh, usually I've got my hands in my lap, cupped, um, occasionally aware of that, um, and then the support of the back of the chair. And is the, would you say that those, those, those touch points, are they solid or are they more, um, uh, are they dense or less, more dense or less dense? Um, I'd say this, there's, they're solid, maybe less dense. Okay. That's something for you to check in on because this the suspended state is actually, it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, state of meditation. And um, at that point, <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, the mind will be more relaxed, the body will be more relaxed, and the boundaries will also start to kind of be a little bit more um, in dissolution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you, if you, the, the sense doors are open, so you'll feel your feet, you'll feel laying. If there's pain in the knee, you'll feel it. But um, the experience of those things will be a little bit less dense. So, uh, when you find yourself in this suspended state, it could be a good exercise to occasionally. Just go to the breath in a pinpointed way and follow the breath for a few moments and see what you mm -hmm. see there. Maybe go to the sensations in the body and follow the, the sensations uh, in the body. Do you ever have any physical pain when you're meditating? Not that I'm aware of. Not so much. Okay, good. All right. If you sit on the floor, you'll, you'll have some physical pain. Um, <laughs> the reason I say that is because physical, it could be interesting from that state to look at the physical pains as well, because what looks like a solid pain will actually start to kind of move and, and become less dense as well and become a little bit less solid yeah um, i've got a shoulder i've got a sh uh, slight shoulder under injury at the moment so i can i can work with that and does that See does the happens. pain does any pain come up in in the meditation from the shoulder i've not tried it actually so i i need to i need to give that um 
I need to give that some attention. Yeah, well, that's okay. You don't have to make, don't try it. I'm not suggesting that you, okay. that you evoke, evoke any type of experience in the meditation other than the experience that's actually arising. Okay. Um, you, you, there are practices that do that, but it's not pure mindfulness. Pure mindfulness is just being mindful of what's arising with no preference. Now, the thing is you had mentioned that this, um, this uh, and then you, there's a, there can be a tingling in the forehead. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's actually a, a, an interesting sign and it's, and it's a pleasant feeling. Yes. Are you mindful of the pleasantness? Yes. Yeah, and is it the same thing like you're in a car and you step to the side of the road and you observe the pleasantness come, stay for a while and go away? No. No, I stay yeah, with so you. Wanna, you want to take... Great. Because in our meditation practice, it's very common for pleasant experiences for us to, super, in a super subtle way, to become attached to them because mm-hmm. they are nice, especially when they're... <laughs> meditative states like this one is sure. but if you do if you do that it'll it'll fixate your practice okay so you want to be sure to be mindful of it mm-hmm. same thing should an unpleasant experience comes up you want to be super careful to detach and observe that as well okay uh, with the meditation practice and as you go deeper and deeper into these states um uh, uh it, it should be easier and easier to de- to detach and observe mm-hmm. So I, uh, so, um, and then you said you finish off the meditation with a check-in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And what do you generally notice in the check-in? Uh, I notice, um, I notice the, the weight of my body and, and, and shift that because obviously I usually need to move and do something. So, um, yeah, right. uh, and then, uh, occasionally I'll stretch, you know, stretch the arms because it's, mm-hmm. it's been, when you when you settle into a seated position long enough, you need to have a bit of a shake out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and it's that simple. You know, it's it's nothing. You know, do you take do 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 you do a check in with your mental state as well? Uh, I, I'll note when it's been a, a positive experience when I've come out of it and I go, oh right, I'm ready. Okay, that right. that or that that feels good or wh- whatever the words are internally that I've said to myself. To go, okay, that's fine. I'm ready to face whatever the day is going to bring. Great. And then you get up and you go about your day. Yes. Good. And do you integrate any of those uh, when you do your skin? The, what did you say? The slightly uh, more relaxed body mm-hmm. and the, um, the, the knowing of when you're in a good, deeper state. Yeah. Do you integrate those into your day? Yes. I, and I notice I'm I, I starting to catch myself when I'm off. So when I'm in, in my head, when I'm when I'm in my head, mm-hmm. I'm aware aware enough to go. Oh, I'm in my head. I need to get into my body, and then I'll sink my attention down into the body, and that becomes more balanced again. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's um and, and this is going to sound weird, but uh, when I remember to, it's something I practice on my dog walk. Um, so I take the dogs, and I'm deliberately pushing my attention into into the body, and yeah. and, and enjoying that experience as I walk, mm-hmm. as I walk the dogs. I know that might sound strange to some people, but not to me, <laughs> not at all. That's what I do as well. It's, it's, <laughs> the, it's, dog, it's, the dog walk is the best time to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So, so it's, it's really clear. So you, 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 it sounds like you get a really great practice and that the, the, uh, the binaural, uh, the binaural beats. Yeah. I can't uh, say it either. <laughs> are, are doing their job. So that's great. So here's what I suggest for you. Um, use the binaural beats. Con- continue with your daily, the, your daily um, practice. Now in your, or your regular practice, a few things that I suggest that you be careful of is notice when there's agency. Agency meaning if you, there's tension, you, you, you relax it. Or if the breath is tight, you make it longer. You know, that you're actually intentionally trying to change. Something we would normally do in Aikido, for example. You know? mm-hmm. um, eventually in meditation, you don't want to do any of that. Okay. You just want to be mindful of what's arising. And then as you're mindful, know that it, know its qualities and then know what happens to it. So if I notice that there's a little, let's say I notice some frustration, for example, then I notice tension in the shoulder. If I pay attention to the tension, I'm not going to immediately try to relax my shoulder, but I'm just going to pay attention to the shoulder. It may become more tense. It may become less tense, but stay with that process. Be mindful of the process. That's the only way you'll begin to see the cause and effect. 
So usually we'll just take judgment and frustration example, again, as an example. It's there and we become aware of it. We miss the moment that it arose. If we can see the judgment when it arises, just like a spark in the forest, if you can see a spark, you just go put your finger on it, no forest fire. But if you come up, you don't see the spark and you see a raging forest, it's quite a job to put out the forest, uh, sure. put out the forest fire. So eventually you want to get to the point where you can just see the judgment come up, you see it, you don't really add fuel to it, you don't engage it, you just, you're just on the side of the road, like you said, and it'll pass away, it'll dissolve and pass away easily. So that's with no agency. Um, if, if something's really obsessive and you just want to kind of push it out, occasionally that's okay. But the only way to purify the process is to simply be mindful and it will purify itself. So the subtle sense of agency, like straightening your back or doing this, it's, a, it's all okay to do that in meditation, but eventually you want to just be in the suspended state, for example, you'll probably find that there's very little agency. So uh, train yourself to give, you know, sit down, get your body ready, put in the things, and then train yourself to just be a pure witness with no agency of what's happening. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is um, when you find that the breathing is slowing, um, make, these, make these shifts a little bit more intentional. Okay, I'm with the breath now, and now I'm gonna open up into choiceless awareness. So just okay. kind of a knowing of what's happening in that process. And mm -hmm. during the choiceless awareness, if you feel like you have to go back and observe the breath, intentionally go back and observe the breath. Or if there's something arising in the mind, intentionally, you know, the way you describe the thoughts coming up is, is actually great. Make that an intentional mindfulness practice. And then allow yourself to kind of come back into the state of, of choiceless awareness. And, um, and with the tingling, with pleasant experiences like the tingling in the forehead, um, just be careful uh, that, you're, that you're also mindful of the, the tingling. Uh, that's a common experience. And I, I don't want to say too much more about that other than it is probably related to the suspended state. I don't think it'll come up before you get there. So you could say it's a sign of an inner, of, of a deeper state of, of practice. So in that sense, it's a good, it's a little bit of a milestone along the path. And mm -hmm. later it won't be there at all. Okay. But the fact that it's there now is good. Um, and then at the end of your practice, um, when you do your check-in, you can choose to write down if not, or not write down, but take a few things, two or three things in the body, two or three things in the mind, and maybe make an intention, okay, I'm going to carry these into my daily life. I'm going to carry these into work. I'm going to carry these into the family. I'm going to take this on my dog, walk, and I'm walking the dog, and see if you can start to create a bridge practice of a deeper internal state into your daily experience. Hmm. So instead of doing one thing and then going on to the next, actually bridge it. You know, so, okay, I'm going to take uh, this more, I'm a bit more calm. Now I'm going to walk into life with this calmness. You know, it might last 15 seconds. It might last 15 minutes. It might last 15 hours. Who knows? But, but mm -hmm. intentionally integrating that. And that, that would be a wonderful way to also integrate these practices into your, your, your Aikido and also the work you're doing in, in consulting and leadership development. And um, these inner states are what's actually important. And this is the last thing that I want to say, Paul, because um, uh, you'd mentioned in your, in your um, Aikido practice that um, a lot of your, your focus is not just on the self, like we've been talking about now, but also on the other. And it could be, you know, like in a martial art, you, you want to, you know, you, we're focusing on the distance, we're focusing on how they're, how they're arranging their body, how they're, what, what attack is coming. But also, that, that's all external. You also want to start to focus on the internally what's happening with them. So feeling into your partner, getting a sense of their emotional quality, getting get a sense of their energetic quality while they perform the, you know, while they, we change roles in the attack or they perform the technique or whatever it's doing. Um, for you to get to the points where you can spontaneously respond to the, um, to random attacks, which is a, which is not, it's not basic Aikido. It's actually rather advanced Aikido. You know, to be able to spontaneously respond, you need some uh -huh. years of practice. You need some yeah. certain amount of muscle mem memory. You need some fluency in, in the technical possibilities and you need some skill. Yep. Then you have to bring in the meditative state. Meditative <laughs> yeah. state is this kind of this mushin or what you said, this kind of, um, oh, sorry, I turned my paper. Uh, the suspended state where the mind is not active and you're like a mirror and you're able to respond to what's arising in the moment. And to do that, it's helpful to have a partner that joins you in that because then it becomes mutually supportive, but it's not always going to be that. So, you know, start the class. I don't know if you meditate before class, but try to bring that meditation into class 
Mm -hmm. and, um, and then really intentionally, okay, we're going to work on these techniques or these exercises, but intentionally see if you can bring that deeper state, the suspended, what'd you say? Suspended state of awareness into relationship with your partner. And, um, and then spontaneous response that's appropriate and effective. In a way, it's, it's a whole other skill that you need to develop, but it's, but it's a non-developmental practice. In other words, mm -hmm. it's something that just has to begin to happen. And it will happen, but you want to make yourself available for it. Last thing I want to say about, about everything you've told me, um, at some point you want to wean yourself from the, the vanilla beats. Yeah? And um, so the best way to do that is if you, if you use the binaural beats five times and try it once without it, mm -hmm. then go back to the binaural beats another five times and then once without it, or do it, uh, start it when you find that you're in that state, maybe take out the earphones for five minutes and then put them back in if you feel that you need to give it. I mean, there's different ways that you can play with it, but there's, um, there's endogenous states experiences mm -hmm. and there's extrogenous states experiences. And that's caused from the outside like using a, uh, sound waves or, um, or certain uh, medicines and drugs can get you into deeper states of consciousness, but it's all caused on the outside. And that's fine, but eventually you want it to be self-caused. You want to be able to kind of create these states uh, by yourself. And your mind is already getting trained to do that. So it's just gonna be a matter of now of, of letting, in, in a way the binaural beats are crutches that's getting you <laughs> along the path. Eventually you want to be able to walk on your own. Okay. So slowly start to do that and then, you know, Keep keep using them. I know advanced advanced meditators that still use them, um, but but they 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 kind of have this coupling practice where they use them and then they don't use them and they they practice on going into deeper states. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Do you have any questions? No, that was great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And um, so this recording will be up uh, up up within a day or two, so you'll be able to. I'll put it on YouTube first, so you'll be able to um, check it out there on the Integral Dojo TV. Great. But yep. otherwise, um, it may be a few days before I put it up on the blog, but it will definitely be up there. That's okay. So All right. Great, Paul. So thank you for uh, everything. I'm happy to hear about your practice and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Miles. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you. And I want to wish you the best in your Aikido and especially in your leadership, uh, in, in your intention behind the leadership practice, because God knows we need it. So uh, <laughs> good for you and the work you're doing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah. have, a, have a great festive season. Yeah, you too. And there'll be some opportunities coming up in, in January for more meditation stuff that, that I'm going to be putting out. Okay. So, uh, be happy right. to join the stuff as well. All right. Thank you. All right. Merry Christmas and all the best to you. Merry Christmas too. Yeah, bye, Paul. Take care. Bye-bye.